All right. Good afternoon, everyone. I guess good morning for those on the West Coast. Uh, I'm not sure what time it is in Australia, if you're watching in from, from Australia here. But uh, uh, welcome to this uh, installment of the MSP Success webinar series. And I was just telling the guys here on the line that I, I've been excited to, to really see and hear about the solution for a while uh, since uh, Matt Solomon and Kevin Lancaster and I were, were talking about it a, a number of months ago. I think it's something that's really needed uh, here and I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing a lot of the details with it. Uh, we've got a uh, whole host of us here on the call uh, with it. We've got uh, Matt Solomon, many of you know Matt, and then from Graphis, we've got Miles Walker uh, and Manoj. Manoj, I'm not gonna even try to, to, to hit your last name there because I'm, I'm gonna probably screw it up uh, there. But uh, we've got the whole team. Couple of just quick housekeeping items here uh, on this call today. One of them is that uh, if you have any questions, you should see the Q&A in there. Easier for us to be able to make sure that we hit everything. We wanna make this an interactive call uh, here. So if you have questions, make sure to hit that up in the Q&A. If you just have a comment or anything else, and maybe I'll just have you practice with it right now, is that uh, uh, in the chat there, of, of go ahead and chat of where you're, you're dialing in from today on this uh, webinar. And so put it in there. Matt, you are in Washington, D.C. I knew that uh, <laughs> there. Uh, so we got south of Boston. We got UK. We've got Rome, Georgia. Uh, and a number of others in there, Indianapolis, Vancouver, uh, Miles is is in there. So we've got a, at least three countries we've got here so far with it. So uh, so yeah, absolutely. So chat for anything that you've just got here, uh, anything that you want questions that are asked, then make sure to uh, hit it in the Q&A box. And with that, I want to get right to the information here. I want to get learning around this, around email security and, and the cool solution that you guys have have put together for MSPs. So Miles, I think I'm gonna turn it over to you to, to start this off. Sounds great. Just making sure, can everyone see that screen there? Yeah, and I know uh, Miles, yell as much as you can. I know you're having a little bit of a microphone issue uh, with uh, it, so. Uh, I, I give, give me there. one of these if you can hear my voice. There you go. Yeah, okay, sounds good. Well, uh, thanks so much for uh, inviting us on, Jeff. Uh, my name is Miles Walker. Uh, I'm the Channel Development Manager uh, for Graphis. I'm here today to talk about automated email security. We're looking at ways to increase security, uh, increase margins, and of course, decrease tech workload. Graphis is an automated email security solution that is simple, powerful, and automated. Uh, so let's, uh, let's get right into it. I know you gave a, a great introduction there. So just once again, we've got Matt Solomon, uh, quite the panel actually today, if I can say so myself. I'm there on the right. Uh, Matt Solomon is our uh, VP of Business Development here at Kaseya. Uh, last but certainly not least, our founder, Manoj. Manoj normally doesn't do special guest appearances, but we managed to get him on for the demo today. Uh, please do add me up on LinkedIn. Um, I'll also provide a link in the chat. Um, this is where I provide videos, webinars, thought leadership, and would love to connect with you in the community. Uh, now let's get started. I have our uh, latest graphics commercial, which I'm going to start off with. Sadly, this one didn't make the cut for the Super Bowl, but it's got a great 80s vibe to it. Don't you wish protecting your business from phishing email was this easy? With Graphis, it is. Powered by unique patented AI technology, Graphis slams down three layers of automated defense between your company's inboxes and phishing email for strong, smart protection at an affordable price. And that's a win for every business. Simple, powerful, automated. That's Graphis. Schedule a demo today or visit graphics.ai. Well, hopefully that worked. Was that choppy, Jeff, or was that pretty good? No, I think you were good. It got it got choppy just in that one last little bit when probably it was saying graphics.ai on on the screen there. Uh, I think but, that's but good stuff. I think it's from the eighties. That's why it was a little choppy. <laughs> But uh, I'll definitely put a link to that commercial uh, in the chat after, so you can feel free to share it if you like or have another watch. Um, 
So let's start with the business landscape for 2021. As we know, COVID-19 has forced millions of businesses into work from home environments, which was quite alien to some people. This means decentralized workspaces, IT security programs that are far less effective. Employees are using email, of course, as a primary form of communication. And unfortunately, phishing also happens to be the simplest yet most effective form of cyber attacks. With this increase in technology, what does that mean? It means an increase in security threats, which means you have to stay protected. Um, I'd like to start off with this slide, uh, phishing versus spear phishing, are you safe? Uh, we can't figure out the problem if we can't define it. So what is phishing? It's just like what you see in the picture, a blanket approach, kind of like actual phishing, where you throw out a big net and try to catch as many fish, so to speak, as possible. Spear phishing, much more specific approach. The cyber criminals might have information or details specifically on their target. And as you see in this picture, they go for a targeted, more specific approach. They know what they're doing and they know what they're going after. Phishing threats have grown exponentially since 2020. I'll focus on a few of these numbers because they're super interesting. Uh, phishing and business email compromise attacks are the leading reason for security breaches in today's IT landscapes. I know a lot of you might know that, and it's only getting worse. Phishing attacks have increased over 600%. I think the number is actually 667% since the start of the pandemic, which I find this to be unbelievable. An estimated 90% of cyber attacks that result in a data breach begin with a phishing email. Um, and the average cost to a business is $130,000. That's the average cost of a successful business email compromise. I know big companies can obviously weather a storm. They can, they can deal with a $130,000 loss, but can small and medium-sized businesses deal with losses like this? That's the question. I uh, have a few examples here of who is at risk, and obviously it is everybody. I picked some uh, examples that are specific and perfect for MSPs, uh, some smaller scale examples. So MSPs are now on cyber, uh, cyber criminals' radars, sadly. They realize that MSPs, in a way, hold the keys to the house and the keys to the car, so to speak. I was looking at an article that came out of uh, the UK this past week. Three out of five manufacturers faced cyber attacks just this past year. And hopefully, the other two had Graphis. Um, but this trend will continue into 2021. Here in North America, criminals are getting more and more creative. Um, I'm guessing a few of you have heard of the... Um, the incident that happened in Florida over the past two weeks, uh, where cyber criminals managed to hack into uh, the system via TeamViewer. That was the system of a small Florida town's water system. So they used TeamViewer. I'm guessing all of us have used TeamViewer at some stage. Luckily, they were caught before things got too serious, but cyber criminals are now going after water supplies and whatever they can. These criminals are getting more and more complex. Um, recently, they've been attacking news agencies, small and medium-sized businesses, as well as MSPs. It's scary to think what they're uh, capable of doing next, to be honest. There's so many types of phishing attacks, and I could probably do a 30 to 40 minute presentation just on the types and techniques. Uh, just this past week alone, uh, I myself have had two phishing emails come through in my personal email. Uh, that is from Apple and one from Amazon. I don't know if you've been to Hotmail recently, but they actually now have a phishing uh, logo up there because this is becoming such a widespread issue. I think domain spoofing like this will be the biggest number jump in 2021. Obviously I mentioned 600% um, since uh, phishing attacks have gone up, but I think domain spoofing is gonna be a real, real problem in 2021. I know Matt himself actually posted a, a great great video on LinkedIn about phishing kits. Um, phishing toolkits are now being sold on the dark web, if you can believe this. Those would fall under the domain spoofing category. It's very shocking that these ready-made kits are now available for purchase all over the dark web. The criminals are now evolving, they're getting smarter, and they're even acting as agents and selling their programs to others so that they can commit cyber attacks. I find this to be so crazy. 
Uh, phishing attacks are surging across the board and they're now everywhere. No website is safe and these cyber criminals are getting smarter and smarter about how they're targeting their victims. It's not just a prince in West Africa asking for money anymore. These are sophisticated, they're highly technical, and they just are going after, well, they're not just going after big businesses anymore. So no one is safe. Overcoming your biggest cybersecurity risk, your employees, or are they? I like to bring this up. A common misconception is that employees are the biggest cyber risk in a business. These are the ones that are opening the emails and they really are the gatekeepers. At Graphis, through our built-in three layers of security, we are trying to change that and turn the biggest risk into a company's largest asset, the employees. Graphis empowers these employees to be involved with protecting the business. And I'll talk about that in a few slides with uh, the employee shield and FISH 911 layers of defense. And Manoj will obviously get into that in more detail as well. All right, cybersecurity by the facts. Where did cyber hacking start? Let's take a little walk down cybersecurity memory lane here. Um, we're going to look back at November uh, 1988. Uh, good old Robert Morris created a worm because he was trying to gauge how big the internet was. Well, it worked and the first cyber attack was made. Uh, for his troubles, what did he get? A $10,000 fine, three years probation, 400 hours of community service. And he set off a chain of events that nobody could have foreseen. This was looked at as the start of cyber crimes as we know it. And guess what he's doing right now? He is a professor at MIT of computer science and AI technology. Uh, along came a very colorful individual called John McAvee, you probably all heard of him. And he is known as the godfather um, as he came up with the first antivirus product. Years later, and mo much more recently, uh, central banks have now been hit by cyber crimes. Um, I know the Bangladeshi Central Bank was hit for $81 million. And just to give you some content, uh, context, the worldwide spend on cybersecurity this past year alone was 123 billion. Obviously that's with a B. Uh, Microsoft, one of the big players in the industry. I wanted to have you guess what they spend on cybersecurity each year. Is it 400, 600, 800 million or over a billion? Um, I'm guessing you might see where I'm leading with this. It's over a billion dollars. So that is just one company spending over a billion dollars. We could take a company like JP Morgan, the big banking firm with head offices in New York. They alone spent over 600 million in uh, cybersecurity this past year. We probably all heard of some of the big companies that have been hacked over the years, of course. Some of the major players in different industries, whether it be Twitter, eBay, Zoom, Yahoo had a breach of over 3 billion emails. These are the big players. But let's have a look at some of the small players, um, most likely managed by an MSP, um, and see how they are affected. So you'll see many logos there, some you probably don't recognize. These are on smaller scale cyber attacks that you might not know about. Why might you not know about them? Like I mentioned, they're small, they're often private companies. They don't want you to know that they've had a cyber breach. These businesses would be considered small, some are into the medium sized category and would be ideal for an MSP to work with. I know Wentworth, uh, many of you wouldn't know Wentworth. It's a small exclusive golf course just outside of London managed by an MSP. And they had a recent cyber attack where 4,000 members data had their uh, details stolen. Uh, school districts in Austin, Texas, they lost over $2 million over the last few months to, due to cyber hacks. The San Francisco municipal rail system was hacked. So it doesn't matter what industry. We obviously talked about Florida earlier. That's water. Uh, San Francisco is transport. Wentworth is golf. Austin is schools. So it doesn't really matter if you're a laundromat, um, you know, a dental office, a private school. They're coming after everybody. So let's hop into Graphis now. We are global. Started in 2015 by our very own Manoj. And in 2020, we became Kaseya's most recent acquisition. And that is when I got brought on. We have three layers of protection. Let's start first with the trust graph. Here is where you're gonna see the AI technology going to work. 
When the technology is deployed, it can take between 15 minutes and as long as up to an hour to get working. So very quick. After that technology builds profiles of trusted relationships and figures out who your clients are talking to, how they communicate and what devices they're using. Details like what time of day do they normally talk? Is it during business hours? And which devices they typically use? Are they using mobile or laptops? From analyzing over 50 attributes from how these employees communicate, it figures out their communication methods and starts protecting your inboxes for G Suite as well as Office 365. Next up, our second layer of defense, the employee shield. This is where all employees have the chance to train our system into protecting the business together. Our employee shield banner will come up on an email when things start to look suspicious. This is amazing as it utilizes the employees to build stronger and safer protections. Employees can actually report phishing emails uh, and by reporting a false positive, it trains our technology to understand even more about who the employee is and who they are communicating with. This can also be fully customizable with a specific message and that can be tailored towards any company. And even the company's colors can be changed. We use this every day at Kaseya and this is the most visible layer of defense. And as you end up interacting with it on a daily basis, this is something you're gonna get used to. Our last line of defense, FISH 911. This is so vital. And one of the greatest parts of this level of defense is that someone has an email that is suspicious or it's clearly phishing, then all the others like this will get quarantined if it's flagged up. I'll let Manoj go over a little bit about that later. So if the team is in New York, they might come across something suspicious. And by the, team, by the time the team in LA has woken up, it's hopefully already been flagged and quarantined so the employees don't have to worry. This is a great help for the IT team and it's a time for them to review and close the ticket. This makes life for both MSPs and businesses that much easier. I know Manoj is gonna be going into a demo pretty soon and uh, he can get a lot more uh, into the weeds about this. I mentioned how easy our integration is earlier and the integration with other Kaseya products really is seamless. So just note that. A couple key takeaways before I pass you on to Matt. With attacks becoming more and more prevalent, having strong, powerful email security tools in place really is a non-negotiable nowadays. With phishing attacks becoming more and more prominent, basic tools just won't cut it anymore. We need a simple, powerful, automated approach to cybersecurity, and that's what Graphis gives. I'm going to pass the mic over to, uh, to Matt Solomon, and uh, he's gonna talk a little bit about powered services. And then after that, we have uh, Manoj, who's gonna step in with a live demo. Yeah, and actually, before going into the sales enablement side of the, the partnership, I, I thought it was worth mentioning, you know, just even on the phishing side of things, um, through our Bullfish ID product, we actually had 200, in 2020, we had 267,000 uh, people click on emails. So just again, articulating how large of an issue that phishing uh, emails are and how important it is. I mean, it's one of the coolest things that when we first heard about Graphis, you know, the, the ability to empower your, the employees because you as an MSP are, are out there on the front lines trying to make security a part of the culture of an organization and, and it's not always easy. Uh, but when you have a tool like that, that does start to really play into, hey, we're all in this together because you do have a capability as an individual to quarant I mean, to flag, you know, a, 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 a real threat to the organization. So, you know, I just thought that was worth, worth mentioning. The, the, the part that I'm coming in here to talk about, and, and I'm going to be pretty brief, is, is really our sales enablement program. So it's, you know, you don't just sign up with Graphis and you're just on your own. Um, you actually get a dedicated channel success manager, um, as part of uh, your contract essentially. And so that person's there to answer questions, walk you through some go-to-market. Um, you also get immediately, as part of our jumpstart program inside uh, Powered Services, you'll get sales sheet, an email template, infographics, a PowerPoint that you can actually deliver to your end users, um, a couple of actually 24 social graphics and some product sales training. So that's all included. 
Um, but one of the things that really kind of differentiated ID Agent originally, um, it's one of the reasons we got acquired by Kaseya and really what Fred uh, Vicola at Kaseya said, I wanna roll this program out to really all MSPs across the Kaseya business units and that includes Graphis. And Miles, if you can go to the next slide, I'll talk about this, which is really taking our sales enablement program uh, to the next level um, with what's called Powered Services Pro. So we're actually each month we're delivering um, a full marketing campaign uh, that fits obviously around Graphis and security, uh, but you're getting two fully curated blog articles, uh, additional uh, marketing templates, again, more uh, social graphics. By the way, we're actually providing you with the, uh, what to say if you, if you, if you kind of just want us to do it all for you. Uh, and then a, another fully white labeled uh, marketing resource. So that's all included in the Powered Services Pro component. Um, and you're actually getting the source files, which is pretty rare uh, for a vendor to offer that up um, as part of this package. Uh, so that, you know, that enables you beyond just white labeling uh, uh, this material, you can actually really make it your own, uh, but we've gotten you 90% of the way. And this also allows you to really incorporate some of the things you're already getting, you know, if you're part of Robin Robin's community, some of the things you're getting through them, then you can able, you're able to incorporate that a lot easier uh, into your marketing. And I think the last kind of slide that, that I'll leave you with, um, and I, actually, Miles, I don't think I added on here. Oh, there it is. Yeah, the Goal Assist program. Again, very unique um, to um, uh, Kaseya and specifically, with, uh, you know, Graphis here. Um, you know, having that channel six, uh, success manager to really talk to you to really go beyond just go to market, you know, have the sales training available to you. So that means if you have a new hire six months into your relationship with us as a partner, they can jump on uh, and do a, a live sales training with their channel success manager. They're always available. Miles is always available. I'm always available. Um, really just reach out to us. Uh, but the coolest component and probably the most, uh, I would say the most successful partners of ours take advantage of, of what's called goal assist which is getting us on webinars as a, as a uh, subject matter expert. So having us help you deliver the message around security, around phishing, uh, automation defense, so that your end users really start to understand the risk. Um, we paint a really good picture with that. We you know, can work with you. And I think it enables you as an, you know, if you're an MSP owner, you know, not everybody's comfortable doing a full uh, presentation. We can be there however you want us to be. Um, you could have Miles and our channel success manager with the Graphis branding if you want, or we can just be on there as a third, uh, as a resource or an extension of your team. Um, we can do the whole presentation. You can do the intro. We can go back and forth and do it together. It's really up to you how you take advantage of it. Uh, but I can just tell you, uh, we've had, had unbelievable success stories with our partners uh, who have uh, taken advantage of that because it's, it's really, there's very few vendors in this space uh, that have the resources available to do that. And it's something we just really pride ourselves on. And I think that uh, Miles is probably the last slide from the powered services side of things, which again is the sales enablement program that you get with uh, Graphis. Um, powered services pro is an additional cost, uh, but the base level of powered services jumpstart is all included. Thanks Matt. Um, so I will give, uh, I'll stop sharing my screen and uh... Manoj, I'll let you take it away. Sounds good, Miles. Thanks, and thanks, Matt. So let me go ahead and uh, first share my screen here. Yeah, Manoj, while you're doing that, actually, Jeff, I don't know if, if you were able to end up doing that poll um, question. The one. Um, yeah, let me let me go ahead and throw that one up here right now. Yeah. Here for for everyone as as Manoj is starting. Yeah. And so simple question, are you satisfied with your current email security solution? So simple yes or no. And we'll hey Matt, I'll, I'll just note it real quick too, Matt, for you. If you, if you check the Q&A, Barry had a question that I think is, is probably best for you to, to answer directly there. Okay, so uh, yeah, uh, Barry, I just purchased 100 inboxes license on Friday, start on March 1st. Should I have heard from someone about implementation by now? Uh, what's start on March 1st. Uh, Manoj, I, I don't, do you wanna? Uh, sorry, when is the subscription starting? March 1st? On March 1st. Yeah, so usually what happens is I think, you know, a day before or two days before your account will be created. You will get a login, you know, uh, email. And you will hear from our onboarding team. They'll send you an email and they'll schedule 
uh, an onboarding call. They'll also send you a link to Kaseya University. So they, they start coming into action, I think, a day before the actual, uh, uh, actual you know, when, when your subscription starts. And, you know, if, if there's something else, you know, in terms of you wanting to get uh, started earlier, uh, just send an email to your account manager and they get in touch with our, uh, you know, our onboarding team and they'll get the things uh, rolling. Excellent. And, and I'll just note the, uh, the results. I'm going to end the poll now, but uh, interestingly on this, and may, maybe not so, but uh, uh, because they're on, on the call here, but 64% of attendees are not satisfied with their current email security solution. Uh, so in, interesting data point. Yeah, so uh, yeah, thanks, uh, thanks Jeff for that. So uh, let me get started with you know uh, with the with the live demo and give some insights to to our audience over here. So uh, I'm Manoj, uh, but you know the role I'm playing right now is that of an MSP. So I have signed up for uh, for Graphus uh, as an MSP partner. I you know I get a login to my MSP portal, and what I do is I come in here to this site cloud.graph.us. Now, depending upon where you are in the world, right? If you are in, let's say, Europe or Australia, your location will be in, in, in EMEA out of, uh, out of uh, Germany. For North America, you know, we have the location out of East Coast uh, uh, in, in US. So just some details on, you know, how you get to the portal. So for this purpose, I'll just be a demo MSP. I log in. So when I log in, I, you know, land on this site where I can see all my current customers, right? In various states uh, of like, you know, what's going on with them. Are they active? Are they in, you know, in progress? Activation is in progress. So let's imagine, you know, that I'm a new MSP. I log in, I'll not see anything. So one of the first things that you want to do is add an end customer uh, to, uh, to start using Graphus. Now, the important thing over here is that Graphus is a cloud native application, right? So what that means is it runs in the cloud. We use AWS, uh, but you, do, you don't have to install any software, any plugin, any endpoint agent on the customer side. You don't even have to change your MX records, right? So no rerouting of the email. You simply come over here, you know, let's just create, uh, create an account over here and I'll show you how quick and easy it is. And so let's say demo.com. I'll just use a fictitious data over here, but this is my email. So essentially like, you know, all you're doing is like providing uh, this information over here and you choose, you know, when you want the subscription to start, when you want it to end, and then you can choose from either Office 365 or G Suite. Let's choose 365. A lot of people have 365. Then all I have to do is click on add organization. So a dummy organization has been created. I go back to my uh, list of organizations and I come back over here and click on activate. When I do this, you know, the step one is that I have to generate a certificate. So I click on generate certificate. A certificate is being created for me. It gets downloaded. So you have it in your environment. The step two now is to activate or give permissions to the Graphus application in your Office 365 environment. So I come on this and basically like, you know, I walk through this guide. There are, the steps have been outlined very clearly for you, but all it is saying is log into your environment and start doing like, you know, giving permissions to Graphus. Now there are a bunch of permissions which are needed uh, for Graphus. And one of the things that you will do is you will actually like use this certificate to make it an application, you know, that is recognized by your system. So you will go through these steps, simple, straightforward. All you're doing is in your panel, you're walking through this. Once you are done with that, the system will give you an application ID for Graphus after, you know, you have uh, activated the, uh, the certificate and given permissions and will also give you a secret, right? So you will, I mean, I'll just put some data in here that will not work, but you enter this data and you click on activate Graphus. The moment you do this, this information is safely given to the Graphus backend. And then what you will see over here is that activation is in progress. Now, depending upon how big the size of the organization is, it can take you know, a few minutes to several hours. 
uh, but all that information will show up to you in terms of how much time it'll take. Now that's literally what you have to do for activating an end customer. Now that end organization could be your own uh, email platform as well, right? So now compare this with secure email gateways or even other like you know um, vendors like Agari or Inky, which do connector-based uh, integration. You don't have to do any of that, nothing at all. So once you have submitted this, what's happening in the background is that now the Grafa system has access to your Active Directory, to the uh, historical email data, and it starts processing all of that. That's where the AI comes into play. And we are doing all that to essentially accelerate the learning of AI. And as Miles talked about, you know, it'll build those uh, sender profiles, their trust ratings, the fingerprints, and all this is what is the basis for figuring out the most sophisticated uh, spoofing attacks and other issues uh, from an email perspective, right? So that's so once that's done, you know, email is flowing in and alerts will start getting generated in the customer's environment. So that's how you would activate an end organization. Now let me move on to the next tab over here, which is the insights tab. So this is uh, basically a single pane of glass where you can see across all your customers what's happening. Now, given that it is a demo environment, we always don't have current data in here. So from the top uh, date bar over here, I am going to choose a much longer period so I can see some alerts. But basically what will happen is, you know, uh, at any given time, you'll be able to see how many attacks have been blocked or quarantined by the system. And uh, FISH 911 reports sub, uh, submitted by your end users and the number of inboxes you are protecting. Now, from this point, you can actually dig deeper in any of these, uh, of these customers, right? So let's say I want to go and see what's happening with Vegas Manufacturing. I click on it, and that's where I'll actually land into the customer portal. And I can see like, you know, for a given period, uh, and I can choose any, any of these time periods from here, uh, what is going on, right? So I can see 43 attacks are quarantined. These are the different type of attacks that have been detected and quarantined by the system automatically, right? Phishing, business email compromise scans, executive spoofing, drive-by download malware, malicious attachments, et cetera. Now, let me point out one very important thing. Graphus works hand in hand with your Office 365 or G Suite. And the system has been designed to create added value and not replicate what Office 365 or G Suite is already doing for you, right? So Office 365 is, is, is pretty good with uh, spam filtering, right? So the main focus of Graphus is actually to detect emails which are a threat to your users and your organization, whether it is credential theft, uh, you know, uh, ATO kind of attack or any kind of like a you know, scam to steal the money. That's where, you know, the system, uh, you know, outshines everything that's out there. You can also see, you know, we talked about employee shields. Now, let me like, you know, be very clear that the difference between attacks quarantined are attacks which have been detected and blocked by the system automatically, whereas employee shield warnings are inserted on emails that are suspicious, but the system does not know enough to say that, okay, you know, the content looks suspicious, but there is no malicious link, there's nothing else. Therefore, I'll put an employee shield. Now, the employee shields actually uh, have action buttons on them, and I'll and I'll quickly show you what they look like. So I come over here. From here, actually, I can see the email as it is available to an end user, and I can see there's a warning banner in here. The warning over here is very very specific to the email. It's not generic. It's not static. It is automatically generated by the system based on the suspicious threat that has been detected. Now, once the recipient sees it, they can either click on report phishing because they agree that this looks bad, therefore I'll click on report phishing. And if they click on report phishing, the email is instantaneously quarantined for all the recipients. Let's say there were more than one recipient. And if they click on remove banner, then the banner disappears and they can go ahead and do uh, other things with the system. So that's how Employee Shield works. Now there's obviously more details, which can, we can show you in a more detailed demo. But let me go back to the insights dashboard to look at some of the other things. So employee shield, right? So we talked about that. Now we also talked about Fish 911 as a third layer. 
Now, FISH 911 is different from the employee shield in the sense it's a catch-all use case. Let's say, uh, you know, an email comes in, there is no employee shield on it, but the recipient thinks this email is not good, right? It, it's potentially a missed attack by, uh, by the system. So what they can do is they can simply forward that email from any device to a dedicated email address, which you actually specify in the settings tab over here. And the moment someone forwards that, the email is instantly uh, quarantined or clawed back from all recipients' environment. And once that happens, you know, uh, uh, MSP or IT team will be notified. They can come and take a look at what that message is. So keep in mind, the, the threat has already been mitigated. Now, when you come and look at it, you can see the details and the events associated with it, you know, who reported it, what happened, et cetera. You can dig deeper to actually take a look at it, right? So you can look at the meta attributes, or you can look at the headers, but the most important thing again comes back to like, you know, uh, looking at the original view of the email as it was, uh, you know, received by the recipient. And this helps you with making an immediate determination that it is something bad. Now, in this particular case, the, the thread has already been closed, but let's say if it was open, you simply click on the close icon and then it basically asks you three or four different questions. It's a wizard and you choose your answers based on what you can see in the original view and you know, and in the investigate icon. And then if you choose from there that it is a threat, then the email stays in quarantine and the system automatically learns from the attributes to know to block these similar emails in future. But if you choose, it's a legitimate email, the email is automatically returned back into the uh, inboxes of all the recipients. Uh, and they also get an email telling them, hey, you know, it has been verified, it is good, you can go ahead and act on it. So the workflows have been automated for you. Uh, something like this, uh, without graphers can take you like 30 to 40 minutes to actually investigate something. And then you have no clue who received it, what they did with it, but with graphers, all that is automated. And in 30 seconds, you can take action on it. So that's how you would like, you know, uh, uh, react to FISH 911 reports and automate your, you know, your processes Employee Shield works on its own. You don't have to get involved. Uh, blocking by system, again, is totally automated. You don't have to be like involved with it. But the important thing is that you have all this capability on your fingertips to actually come in and take a deeper dive if you need to. In addition to that, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you can also do co, uh, your end customer can co-manage the platform with you, right? So if you so choose, you can actually create accounts for your end users, and they will have view only to the customer uh, portal uh, of it, not about not the rest of your customer, uh, other customers. In the settings folder, there's not much you have to do. This is literally, you know, you can choose what privileges you want to give to other users of the system simply by toggling on off on these various capabilities. Uh, this is where you would configure a dedicated inbox uh, for Fish 911 integration. You can enable real-time notification. Now, one thing we did not talk about, but uh, is an added layer, which is executive spoofing. So in addition to system, you know, based on the AI knowing who is trusted, who's not trusted, you can actually specify names over here, not the email addresses, but names. And the system will look for these names if they are being used in any social engineering tactics. And if they are, the emails will be uh, quarantined or, or alerted on. Now we did talk about like, you know, employee shield and like customization, uh, literally with, you know, with, with a few clicks, you can customize this, right? So let's say, you know, I want my company name is Robin Robin. I come in and I, you know, simply change this, right? So simple stuff, but very, very helpful in terms of like, you know, uh, changing the look and feel and creating your own brand. There are other features in here, which allow you to gradually roll out employee shield to the organization so that they are not shocked. You can test with a user case, user base, et cetera. You can actually like, you know, send uh, reports out to your end customers by simply adding their email addresses over here and without giving them access to the platform. You can give access to, but there's an added capability to allow all of that. And we also do third-party integrations with SIM, ticketing systems, et cetera, that we can, you know, uh, take a deeper look in a more detailed demo some other time. The other thing over here is that anyone who has an access to a customer portal, 
their actions are audited, whether they are reading, changing data or whatever searching, all that is over here. You can search by different users. You can look at all the users together. You can export this to a central log management system to do any kind of fraud analytics and stuff like that. So this is in a nutshell, the product is future rich, but the most important thing is it's simple, right? Right from activating a customer to using it, uh, you know, yourself uh, or the end users. It's powerful because the algorithms are doing stuff on their own. You don't have to write any filtering scripts any like, you know, detect this, but not that, none of that. System does it for you automatically. And it is highly automated, right? So you have the time to focus on other things and let the system be on, you know, do its job in terms of detecting, doing the employee shield, you know, auto, uh, being an autopilot in terms of detecting threats and quarantining stuff and, and same thing with Fish 911. So that's in a nutshell, you know, at, at a very high level, uh, how the system is different and powerful. Uh, and helps you like create a layer of security, which is totally unparalleled. With that, you know, I mean, definitely would love, uh, you know, you guys to have, uh, you know, see more detailed demo, but I'll uh, hand it back to you, Matt, uh, to add anything else to it or, or Miles for that matter. Thanks so much, Manoj. <clears throat> Matt, did you want to take that last question there in the chat? Matt, are you on mute? Can't hear you. Hey, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, ask both those. We, we've got two questions that are out here right now. So Todd was asking, uh, does Graphis uh, compete with Bullfish or how, how do you position both products? So if I've got both Bullfish and Graphis, how do I differentiate with those? Right. <clears throat> Matt, do you want to take that or do you want me to take it? Uh, can you, all right, just making sure you can hear me now. Um, yeah, so we got sorry. you now, Matt. I, I think my, my headset like went to sleep while, uh, well, um, but um, so, you no, know, it, it doesn't co compete. I mean, it, I, I would think of it as a complimentary uh, product, really. Um, you know, Bullfish is, you know, they're both to me necessary parts of, of a security stack. Um, you know, Bullfish is training your employees, um, you know, you got the, the simulations, right? The phishing simulations, so that they one that they even recognize what a phishing email uh, looks like, and you know the things to 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 look out for, so that they actually know when it, when some one is visible in front of them, then they can mark it as uh, a potential threat with a, a graphics type of product, and and the security awareness training, which is part of Bullfish, goes beyond just you know phishing. So you're talking about all the different layers of security. Uh, that you need to train an organization on. And truthfully, when you start talking about cyber security, uh, or excuse me, cyber insurance, you know, I, I kind of say like, good luck getting a cyber insurance company to pay out, um, you know, a, a claim if you're not showing that you're doing, you know, security awareness training, um, these types of things. So yeah, definitely complimentary. And Manoj, I mean, I think it's like a click of a button if you happen to be a Bullfish ID user, in terms of getting the, some of the information over from to Graphis, correct? Uh, that is correct, right? So, so the first uh, you know thing is that uh, they are complementary products. Fish, Bullfish is training the employees on how to recognize something suspicious, whereas Graphis is providing automated, uh, automated uh, you know protection through its first layer of uh, defense, and then leveraging employees to and further empowering them with the detailed messages in the employee shield, so that you know they can put their training to practice by seeing, by reading what is being you know, told to them and you know, be more accurate and effective in, in what they're doing. So they are absolutely complementary. Uh, the second piece in terms of integration. So let's say you are already a Bullfish customer and you have like you know, hundreds of customers using Bullfish. So when you come on Graphus, right? For, uh, for, for activating hundred customers can take time, right? So with a single click, you can actually onboard all your customers, they will not be activated, but their data will be will be you know put into uh, into the Graphus backend with one single click. So that's what the integration does now. We obviously have plans to you know have much more tighter integration in terms of looking at the end user training profile, how good or bad they are, and making the Graphus security more adaptive based on emails being received by those individuals. Uh, so anyway, that's that's the future of like you know how what will happen together. 
I do see a question from, um, from one of the participants, the saying that, you know, their existing customer was compromised, uh, uh, but if they deploy graphers, will the graphers learn bad data, right? So they were compromised as in somebody logged in and, you know, took over the account. The short answer is uh, no. And the reason for that is the algorithms are smart. They, they cluster attributes. What that does is any outliers, like, you know, one-off, sign-off from different locations, they don't become part of the coal algorithm. And that's a very important thing in AI, the notion of clustering and only learning what is recurring data and not one-offs or like, you know, more than one-offs for that matter, uh, things that don't fall within that cluster. I, I hope I have answered that uh, question. Yeah, and, I mean, there's a couple other questions that come up. Um, and I definitely want to get to a couple of them. And Juan Colares, I think the last time I saw you was when me, Jeff, and you were in London, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly. <laughs> it's like right before yep. COVID. Um, does Graphis identify email impersonation? The answer is yes. Uh, email impersonations, uh, you know, they can happen through exact, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, email address uh, spoofing. It can happen through uh, organizational domain spoofing. It can happen through display uh, name spoofing. There are many aspects of it, but that's uh, recognizing or detecting spoofing, right, is one of the core capabilities of graphers. And that's why, you know, uh, we have this technology called Trust Graph, which is all about uh, figuring out the identities and authenticating them independent of anything, you know, that is done by the system, which is DKIM and DMARC and SPF and stuff like that. This is a patented technology we have that runs on top of everything else. Yeah. Um, Mark asked a good question, which is, and I, and I would assume this doesn't just mean bullfish if they're using another product. Uh, does Graphis recognize white listed domains in M365 so that the phishing emails can get through? So obviously if somebody was using both a phishing simulation and this, can those phishing simulations get through? That's part one of the question. So I'll let you answer that first. Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, so like, you know, the system out of the box uh, already whitelists uh, you know, quite a few uh, phishing awareness training solutions so that, you know, whether it is IP-based or domain-based, those emails uh, get passed uh, into the, your inboxes for training purposes. Uh, but as part of onboarding, you know, we do ask our customers to ask them explicitly who they are using and if there's something that they need to get whitelisted. Uh, so, you know, there's a mechanism in place for you to whitelist uh, stuff, uh, whether it is domain or at IP level but we do make those whitelisting go through our backend team to make sure that those addresses and IPs, et cetera, indeed uh, should be whitelisted or there is any history of prior compromise on those assets or not. But the short answer is that yes, you'll be able to whitelist, uh, whitelist those things and continue with your uh, phishing awareness trading solution. Yeah, and kind of the secondary part, which is more of a statement, which is, well, and a question. Likewise, when those test emails do go through, won't customers wonder why Graphis is not doing its job? And maybe I can take a stab at that one, which is one, no, no, no product's going to stop every phishing email. And, and you wouldn't want to train the employees to assume that. I mean, it's kind of playing right into the training, which is you want them to, to see an email, recognize that it's a phishing email and, and mark it. So, so I, I don't know that, that, that the overall would feel would be that it's not working. Um, emails are going to get through and, and that's part of them being that, that really important second layer of defense uh, beyond the Graphis algorithm. Um, Matt, let me, let me yeah. quickly expand upon that. Okay. So one thing is, yes, the email will be delivered, right? So which means it, it didn't get blocked. It will not even have an employee shield. But when it gets delivered to the end user, there is fish 911. So what we see is that end users will forward that email to the fish 911 email address. So they have demonstrated two things. One, they learned from the training that yes, this is bad. And then they remember to use Graphis fish 911 to report it, right? So it comes to IT that it has been reported. And over there, when you are doing the final disposition on it, you can say, there is, a, there is, a, there is a, a button that, hey, this is a phishing awareness training. You click on it, the system will not do anything from an algorithm's perspective. It'll just mark it as, okay. Uh, it, it'll generate an email for the recipient saying, good job, this was a, a training email, you got it. 
and you did the right thing by using Fish 911 to report it. So it's 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 a it's a, it's a complete 360 view in that sense where many things succeed when the end user do all the right expected things from them. Yep. And I think one of the last questions, how does it work when you send in a phone with Graphis? Do they have to sign in with their Microsoft account in Safari instead of Outlook? So whatever application you are using on your device, right? It could be, you know, an Outlook application on your phone. It could be, you know, some other uh, application on your phone. So Graphis works at the network uh, layer level. Uh, it does that. So it, it works on any device and any client application you are using. And that is true for the employee shield as well. And as far as Fish 911 is concerned, that is a simple forward to a, uh, to a, to a well-known email address, which you have configured in the settings. So that works from any device as well. So Graphos does not depend on any plugin, any endpoint agent, uh, or any uh, email client application for that matter. Yeah. And then uh, Juan also just asked if you're able to provide any type of idea on, on pricing packages. Uh, you know, I know the overall, you know, people are always interested in the cost per user, what it ultimately kind of comes down to. Um, of course, we will send some uh, of that information as well. So there's one real quick thing, uh, Matt, if you have time, I would like to point out real quick. Sure. So what you're seeing right now on my screen is uh, inboxes protected. So this is a breakout of all the different licenses, you know, paid license and below that you have in your, uh, in your Outlook account for the end customer. The important thing I want to point out is that Graphos does not charge you for shared mailboxes and guest users. It only charges you for the licenses that you are paying to Office 365. So in effect, what you are getting is uh, the total number of inboxes protected are paid licenses plus everything that you see below paid licenses, right? So you're getting a lot more value, but you're only paying for what you actually pay to Office 365. You're getting ma shared mailboxes and guest users for free. And the groups are also protected and there is no separate charge for groups. So you get like, you know, a lot of value for the actual inboxes that you're paying for. Yeah. And Barry was just asking, what are free licenses where it says that? Well, so, you know, it is interesting how Microsoft does things. They actually have a notion of free licenses if you query their Azure Active Directory. And sometimes they're leveraging it for like, you know, certain category of users that they just give for free. For example, you know, in cases of uh, educational institutions, I have seen it that Students will have free licenses and staff will have paid licenses. So that's a category they have uh, through which they are giving license to their end users, but not charging for it. So we have implemented exactly the same model because the data that you see over here, paid licenses and below, is directly coming from the Azure Active Directory. Got it. I think we answered most of the questions, at least I Hey, I, I, I've, I've got a question, Matt, and this this may be just just from a, what you're seeing with MSPs. How are they doing that? Are, are they using this a, as just one additional part of the security stack, and they're rolling it into uh, of what they're doing already, or are they selling this as an additional add-on service to their clients? Or may, maybe the answer is all of the above. But what what are you seeing on that as a trend? Uh, for those that are are, are using Graphis. Yeah, I mean, I Manoj, you can certainly answer that too. Um, you know, from my side of things, you know, it's it's it is kind of all of the above, right? Because it depends on, you know, where you are in terms of your security stack. I mean, you know, I think most people are, you know, are are moving towards bundles. Um, that's definitely, you know, I think the best way because then. You know, you're avoiding that that whole like redlining like a, a single item, um, and and so that's definitely the way people are moving. But of course, if if you're already somebody just signed on to a bundle and it's a new product that you're trying to to roll out, I mean, we are seeing that. But but definitely more on the bundle side for, from what I'm hearing uh, from MSPs. Manoj, I don't know if you have any other insights there. So that is true, right? From a business model perspective, you know that is exactly how how they're doing it. Uh, but technologically, right, and 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 that actually, you know, like reflects in some of the ways how MSPs are doing. Graphos coexists with Secure Email Gateways. It coexists with Microsoft ADP. 
right? So if somebody wants to use Graphos as an additional layer, and we see that in larger organizations, you know, thousand user organizations, two thousand user organizations, they are you know using you know I don't know one of the top vendors, uh, Proofpoint or Mimecast, uh, you know, for their primary email security. But with Graphos, you know, they get the visibility, they get you know all the other layers along with the ability to investigate and take incident response and know exactly what's going on in the environment, which they don't have with the secure email gateways. The word they use is that we are flying blind with secure email gateways. So with those kind of end customer base, you know, we see like being used uh, in, in, in parallel or as an additional layer. But for the SMB sector, right, uh, people will come in, they will be using like ATP, uh, you know, or some other uh, Barracuda, et cetera. They, they simply replace those with graphers in their stack for a much better security at a much better price. Manoj, we've got a couple other questions that just came through as well. Uh, one of them is, do you guys offer a training or training guide for the end users? And does this product work with the employee shield? And how does it work if you don't have the shield enabled? Uh, okay, so first question is, you know, uh, we do have, uh, you know, uh, onboarding documents, email templates that we, you know, use to train the MSPs in terms of how to roll out the product uh, for in their organization for the end users. There is no real training required to use graphers by end users. And I don't mean the IT or the MSP, but, you know, the recipients within the organization. What they do need is like, you know, an email or sensitization on what Employee Shield is, if you see this, what you're supposed to do. So we have email templates to help you uh, socialize or you know, communicate uh, that to your uh, end customer organization. Uh, Maya, sorry, what was the second part of the question? Um, just give me a second here, I'm just gonna go back. It, it's... Did I delete it there for you? Yeah, here, sorry, can... Jim. You got it, Miles, or I got it here? It says, um, uh... And, and does the product work out with employee shield and how does it work if you don't have the shield enabled? Right. Not, yeah. So if you, if you turn off the shield, which you can, you know, in, in the, in the settings, you know, you can, uh, you can turn off the shield right by, uh, you know, by turning it off over here. So two things, one is product will work. The attacks that are being detected and quarantined, that portion works. And then you have the fish 911, right? When you turn off the customer uh, employee shield, then if an email is suspicious, an alert will be generated for the IT slash MSP team, but the end user will not see that warning banner, right? So if they don't see the warning banner, they can still use Fish 911 to forward that and quarantine that instantly. But we don't recommend you not to use, uh, we don't recommend uh, to not use employee shield. We, we highly recommend to use it. And if you feel uncomfortable, there is a mechanism to like, you know, roll it out gradually. You can come click on it. You can have a, use, a test user base. You can like run it for a couple of weeks, understand the user behavior interaction, formulate your communication plan, communicate to the rest of the employees. And when you feel comfortable then you go ahead and click on enable for the entire user base. So we highly recommend that you use it. But if you don't, then the product still works between uh, Automatic, uh, automated quarantining or blocking and the FISH 911. Okay, we've got two other questions here, Manoj. Um, so this is a phishing service primarily, and does this compete with products like Avanan and Iron Scales? Uh, it does, and, it, uh, and the product has full functionality. So it is not just phishing, right? It is any kind of email threats, which is phishing, business email compromise, ATO, malware, ransomware, anything which can steal your data, which can like, you know, uh, steal your credentials, all kind, all the all uh, email threats are protected by this. It has like, you know, all these other capabilities that you see on the left hand side in terms of deep visibility control, clawback, deleting, right? Real time investigation and response. So it competes on each and every feature and better uh, with Avanon as well as Iron Scales. Uh, it has more automation compared to Iron Scales. Iron Scales seems to be more like you know, a SOG driven tool, uh, you know, but over here you got like, you know, even without a SOG team or an MSP team dedicated on it, 
the system has automated workflows with much higher degree of automation built into it. So it's a complete email security tool and not just phishing. Phishing is one important part of it. Uh, we've got another question here that's just come through. Does this filter spam or require a spam filter in addition? So the spam filter that comes with Office 365 and G Suite is more than sufficient to take care of spam filtering. And the rest is taken care of by uh, Graphus in terms of detecting and, uh, and, you know, uh, and, and, and removing those threads. So the short answer is you need a base spam filter which comes with your platform. So bulk of the spam can be dropped on the edge as opposed to being delivered in your inbox and then being removed by Graphus. Okay, and I've got another question just on that spam question. Uh, will we need a spam and email virus protection layer in addition? Or have you answered that one? Well, so I already answered you about the spam, you know, that you should leverage your Office 365 uh, absolutely in addition because it is more efficient. As far as virus is concerned, I mean, same thing, you know, what comes with your platform, the rest of the ransomware or malware that makes through the base platform security is taken care of by Graphics. Okay. And I, what we got another question. How does this, I love the questions, by the way, this is great. How does this product work with Intune? Uh, so I'll be honest, I am not familiar with Intune. If Intune is, uh, is uh, a secure email gateway, then they can coexist. If Intune is an API-based product, then there can be conflicts. But most of the things out there uh, are uh, you know, secure email or upstream-based solutions, in which case Graphus coexists with them. Sounds great. Uh, any other last questions there in the chat, guys? Jeff, have you seen anything else? No, I'm double checking chat here, not seeing anything. But uh, hey, guys, what what's the best way if someone's interested uh, in in checking out graphics, graphics take, taking the next step? What 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 should they do? Who who should they reach out to right now? Matt, do you want to take that one? Uh, no, I mean, that, that, that's you. So it, it's the sales email is probably the best one, right? <laughs> um, you I'll, put... I'll, put that, I'll put that in the chat right now. Well, what, what you mentioned it live here too, uh, Maya, yeah, just Miles, because what... it won't be in the chat for the uh, recording too. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's sales at graphus.ai. And that's and... G-R-A-P-H-U-S dot A-I. Yep. Sales at uh, G-R-A-P-H-U-S dot A-I. Um, feel free to reach out to myself as well if you have any questions and I can put you in touch with the right people. Um, yeah, that's yeah. that's And there's also, I mean, obviously, like for the people listening on the recording, it's as simple as also going to the website and there's a contact us uh, form that you can fill out. Very, very simple um, to do that as well. Okay. Excellent. Well, any, any party words, guys, before we wrap it up here? Uh, well, for safe. me, I think it was a pleasure. You know, I mean, I really like the the variety and quality of questions. So definitely a very informed audience. So it was a pleasure, you know, to be here and talking to you. Go okay, ahead, Miles. Excellent. Yeah, you know, it was great great to learn about the the, the product and see so much of it. Uh, Manoj, thanks thanks so much for doing that that in depth demo uh, of walking through everything. I know that's always. Uh, Super helpful for everyone out there to be able to see real live of, of, of how it works uh, here. Slides will be posted. You'll, you'll get those uh, along with a copy of the video for everyone that registered for it. Uh, so, so watch after that. If you guys need anything too, sales at graphis.ai is your place to go and they can get you whatever you need to be able to take a look at uh, the, the product and the materials here. So guys, thanks for, uh, for taking the time today. I, I appreciate it. Uh, and the partnership that we've got with Kaseya and, and all the team there. So, so Matt and Miles and Manoj, uh, thanks so much. Those that were on here live today, uh, thanks so much as well, especially for all those great questions. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Cheers, all right. Guys. Have a good one.